going to tie a streamer called the Nutcracker, and I'm starting off with a size 4 streamer hook in the vise. And I'm going to tie this in a white and green, so the thread that I'm going to use is a 140 olive. And I'm just going to get that started about the midway point in the hook shank, and I'll wrap it down to about the point in the hook. Now I can remove the excess thread. The tail for this pattern is a cross-cut zonker, and so I've got the white strip here and all that I'm going to do is remove some of the fibers from the end. I want to make sure that it's laying down towards the tail and I'm just going to tie this in on top. Just take a couple of good turns to make sure that it's not going anywhere. If you want to put a drop of Zappagap, you can. And then I'm going to measure the tail to be about a hook shank in length. I don't want to go much longer than that cause uh, the longer you go with these zonker strips, the more likely you are to get it fouled in the in the hook. And when I cut it, I cut it from the bottom, and so then that the the rest of the fibers will stay stay long towards the back. So it'll give you another another inch or so of trailing material there. So now I'm going to come in and add my first section of marabou, and I'm going to keep it in that white family. So I'll take a section or a plume of marabou here. And I'm usually pretty generous with it. So I'll take off my white marabou. I'm just going to trim the end of this just so it's easier to work with. And when I measure this out, I'm going to take it about half the distance of the overall tail. So I'll just switch hands and take my measurement where I'm going to tie it in. And then I'll just set it on top. And I'm just going to take two loose wraps and then I'm going to start to move the marabou so that it covers the entire hook shank. Now I'll just tie this down. Got a little long in the tip, so I'm just going to trim that up. It's all going to be covered by the next section of marabou, but just so I get a couple of wraps in here to make sure it's nice and tight. So I'll bind that down, and then I can come back and add in my second batch. And so, uh, keeping in the pattern of, of white and green, I'm going to take an olive marabou and again take a good generous section of plumes here. And I'll do the same thing. I want it to be about halfway up, or maybe a little bit more of the white. So I'll just take a measurement, switch hands, trim the ends, and then same thing. I'll take two soft turns and I'll just start to position this over the entire hook shank. And then I can start to tie it down. I'll come back through and trim this knot. and then just make sure that I've gotten it covered all the way around and then I'll tighten it down a bit now I can add in just a little bit of flash and you've got some options here I'm going to use a crystal flash and I'm going to use it in that uh, kind of pearlescent green I'm going to take three strands and tie them into either side A lot of times you see these in red or a bright color, pinks, etc. And I'm going to measure them out to fall kind of at that first first marabou mark. So trim it back to where my white is. And I'll take three more strands, do the same thing on the other side. trim it 
to the mirror there as well. I'll just take one more pass up and through. And now I can tie in the head of this. And I'm going to spin some deer hair here. Uh, but one more ingredient first. I like to take a mallard flank. And this I'm going to use. It's kind of a dyed, uh, dyed mallard. And I'm going to just wrap a section of it just behind that. So I'll take it, pull everything back. It gets real stemmy, so I want to make sure that it's a workable material. So I'm going to take it and clip it, uh, clip it just maybe midway up and then start to remove some of those fibers. So I've got a place to hold on to. I'm going to tie this in by the tip, but you can do it either way. So I've got my tip. I'm just going to clip it. And tie this in. And now I can just take my hackle pliers and I'll wet these back just a little bit so that I'm getting more volume per turn. So two wraps, three wraps or so ought to do it. And I'll just come back through and Tighten that in. I can trim the the excess there. All right. Now I can add in my head, and for that again, I'll keep it all in the same. Uh, family, so this is an olive color uh, deer hair. So I'm going to take off a clump as big as my stacker can handle. Trim it. Give it a couple of taps here. And pull it out. Now that I've got the tips aligned, I'm just going to trim this pretty short. So that it doesn't interfere with the tips. I'm just going to set this right on top. I'm going to take one, two soft turns and then pull straight down and then it'll start to spin. And when it stops, it usually means that it's in nice and tight. And you'll see I left those tips short, and I do that on purpose so that when I start trimming, I don't clip, I don't clip the ends that I stacked. So if you leave them real long, you can lose them in the cutting process. All right, so I'll just push that back. I'll take a couple wraps here in front just to make sure it's not going anywhere, and then I can repeat the process. Uh, removing the hair. I don't need the tips in this so I'm going to trim it so I have a manageable amount to work with. I'm going to set this right on top at an angle, take two soft wraps, pull straight down, let it spin, make my wraps, and now I'll push this, pack this together as tight as I can, and it looks like I can get one more pinch in there, so I'll go back. Take another clump. I'll remove the tips. Set it on top. Take two turns, pull straight down, let it spin and then work my way back up to the eye of the hook here. Just get it nice and compressed.
And now I can put in my whip finish. If you have trouble getting that head back, you can use a piece of plastic, like a plastic bag, put it over the eye. Um, I've also got this tool, which you push it through and can help uh, keep that deer hair back while you do it. So I'll just trim the thread, and now I can get to get to shaping this. So I've got a curve scissors, and so that's where I'm going to start, and I'm just going to take and let the curve of the scissors do the work. And then I can start to work the top of it. And just start to shape that head. And you'll see then I start to get back here to where those shorter fibers were and then I know I'm close to those tips that I stacked and tied in. So I'm just kind of following that ridge line along, trying to keep as many tips in as I can. And Just start building out that that head. I try to keep this as kind of bulky uh, as I as I can, and the reason for that is I want it to push a lot of water, so I don't uh, I don't keep a real narrow head on this. I will try to smooth out the bottom a bit so it's a little flatter than than the rest of it. And this is one of those one of those things where I probably obsess over more than I more than I should, but you can really get detailed at crafting these crafting these heads. But if you're like me, the more I the more I trim and kind of work the hair, the uglier it gets. So I gotta quit while quit while I'm ahead. But that gives you a, a basic idea. Uh, you can also get a little bit more fine-tuned uh, with your trimming if you want to use uh, a razor. And these you can pick up at, at Walgreens or any place like that. And this just helps help shape the head. But again, I'm going to leave it leave it pretty big so I don't have much fine-tuning to do. helps if you just want to take everything off the bottom and flatten that out. So, I'll stop playing with it now. That gives you an idea. Uh, pretty cool streamer, uh, and it's called the Nutcracker.